Hello everyone and welcome to this Scientix webinar titled Say Yes to STEM. Join to find out more about the STEM Discovery Week 2018. My name is Noelle Billon, I'm the Scientix Deputy Project Officer and I will moderate this session. With us today, we have two representatives of European Schoolnet, Agueda Grass and Evita Tassiopoulou. As head of the Science Education Department at UN, Agada Grass is in charge of overseeing and coordinating all the math and science projects in which UN is involved. Additionally, she is in charge of the day-to-day -day management of Scientix and coordinates UN Ministries of Education STEM representatives working group. Evita Tassiopoulou is a project manager for science projects in the Science Education Department of European Schoolnet. Her main activities focus on the management of European projects and ensuring their successful delivery, while she's particularly interested and involved in projects linked to school pilot activities, space studies, and the provision of remote laboratories to schools. During this webinar today, we will answer all your questions about this campaign, the STEM Discovery Week 2018, and tell you everything you need to know so you can participate in or contribute to it. We received many questions in our online questionnaire prior to the webinar, so thank you all for your contributions, and we will do our best to address all the ones that were related to the STEM Discovery Week. My colleague Adina, in the webinar chat, will be helping you with any technical problems you may have, so please write to her privately if you experience any difficulties in attending this session. Please remember to turn down your cameras and microphones. At the end of the session, we will have 15 minutes in which you will be able to address questions to our experts through the chat. However, as we will try to answer all the questions you posted about the STEM Discovery Week during this webinar, please wait until the end of the presentation if you still have some remaining questions. Just a reminder, if you want to receive a certificate, please fill in our feedback survey, which link will be shared after this presentation. Only participants who attended the webinar and filled in this survey will be able to, cert to receive this certificate. That is all for now. I will start with the STEM Discovery Week 2018, the subject of our webinar today. The STEM Discovery Week is the joint international initiative that invites projects, organizations, and schools across Europe and around the world to celebrate careers and studies in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Scientix was among the initiator behind the STEM Discovery Week campaign, which was first organized in April 2016, and then again in April 2017. Scientix co-organized the STEM Discovery Week 2017 in collaboration with the project STEM Alliance in 2017, and it offered three competitions for teachers. The participation in the STEM Discovery Week 2017 last year was very positive. It was estimated that uh, we reached a total of 1,500 schools, 2,000 teachers, and about 13,300 students. We also reached about 146 companies in 23 countries. An infograph with those statistics can be downloaded at the web, at the web address that you can uh, uh, that is on the Scientix portal. Of course, we would like to continue with these positive results with this year's campaign. And the, tag, the tagline for this year's campaign, Say Yes to STEM, describes the partner's open-minded and dedicated support to STEM subjects at school, as well as wide-ranging collaboration among stake, stakeholders in the area. But I won't say more and about the STEM Discovery Week 2018, as we will directly answer the questions that you posted on the online questionnaire. And I will leave now the floor to Agueda Grass in order to respond to this the first question. So, hello everybody. I'm looking forward to seeing what questions you've sent. So Agueda, we have the two first questions from Clara Itelli. And uh, she would like to know how uh, she can show the activity she planned for the STEM Discovery Week and what happens if uh, she cannot fulfill all the activities she planned in their submission. 
So, uh, Clara, the way to actually share what you're actually doing is through our activity map. You, have, you go to the STEM Discovery Week page and you will see that we have a very cool map with a submit your activity link at the bottom and everything we submit is reviewed and then published in the map within, let's say, one working day. And we're getting more and more activities actually published there. So we look forward to seeing what you're doing. Regarding the other question of what happens if you can actually not actually fulfill everything you did, that's not a big problem. If it's a minor detail, you don't have to worry. If it's a big thing, then we recommend that you actually write to our colleague, Adri Pep. Pep you're going to see the address there. And uh, just tell them her what you are not going to be doing. If it's after the event, the important thing is that we will care mostly for those activities that are part of the competition. For the competition, of course, we need to know exactly what happened. For those that is more about displaying activities, it's okay if there's minor variations. I have another question from Anita from Croatia. Uh, will there be competitions organized for the STEM Week participants and their students? In our case, uh, as far as the projects are concerned, yes, we're organizing the competitions. We're also doing uh, in, on behalf of organizations. Additionally, what we suggest is if you're thinking of organizing a competition at the level of a specific project, specific school or an activity, is that you tell the story through the STEM Discovery Week blog. That's the way of actually sharing your whole story. This is what we did. That is how we selected the winners. This is our, actually the winners. And we will actually help disseminate across Europe. And now another question from Italy, from Giulia. How do I connect my initiative to the Global STEM Discovery Week Network? The first thing is, of course, to actually connect it with the activities map. But in addition, there's different options. If you're a school, you can actually also become a partner. Or if you have a project, the project can become a partner. If you look at the STEM Discovery page on the right hand side, you will also see that there's how to become a partner. The idea is that you will find instructions of what to copy and what to paste on your own website. And then what will happen is that your, the STEM Discovery page will also be appearing on all these cool websites across Europe. And then we'll give you visibility also to the schools and the projects. Now about the next question, I think there are more about uh, dissemination, how they can, uh, uh, people can promote the STEM Discovery Week. So we have a question from Croatia. And how can um, she do as an ambassador to help in promoting the STEM Discovery Week? And what is important to do in trying to disseminate the, the event? Okay, Sonia, I wonder if you're there actually. Can you say hi in the chat if you're there? Sonia is shy now. So what can an ambassador do to actually help promote this STEM Discovery Week? And what can you do to actually, what are we targeting? So to help is everything you're doing. Share via social media, share to your teacher, to your colleagues, share in your schools, your, your cities, everywhere. What's the target? Of course, initially is to actually get all the kids to understand how important STEM is in our lives. But also, and that's kind of the inner internal target we have, is that these are the, the, the target or the numbers we reached in 2017. If you see there, we had 119 activities organized. I have to tell you that today, which is 28th of February already, Audrey was actually telling me that we already have 97 activities in the map. So we're actually looking forward to seeing which is activity number 100. So if you haven't submitted yours yet, Please do it so because it's already it's okay the end of February and we already have almost as many as in 2017. Our target for this year 500. So we really look forward to your help to reach that number. And a second question from um, Romania and Bulgaria: How do we encourage teachers and heads um, and head teacher to say yes to STEM and how to give more visibility to the STEM Discovery Week before, during, and after? Okay, uh, for teachers, what you're doing is excellent. You're actually talking to teachers across, uh, every day in your life, basically. Heads of schools, what do they care about? It's also visibility, visibility to your schools. So you want, what you want to do is make sure that you actually include your school in the map. And maybe if you have contacts or the possibility of, of joining the project or the campaign, also from the school side, 
is to submit your school as a partner of the whole campaign. And that will actually give you a lot of visibility to your school. Your, your school will actually appear in the list of schools partners of the project on the right hand side of every single page that were, is involved in the Discovery Week. The other question you were saying, uh, how to, um, what was the question, the second one, Noel? Can you go back? Yes, yeah, sure. So the second yes, question. Yes, be, before, during and after. Mm. Uh, so before, what you're doing, social media, multiplication events, anything that you can do to actually make people aware that it's coming. During the event, important things, highlight what you're doing, but also give visibility to the other schools. You know some other school is doing it, use social media to talk about them as well. Highlight it in newspapers, in t on TV, go to uh, presentations where you can go and talk about what you're doing, go and send a flyer to all these parents or your school. What about after? We're actually working on a STEM Discovery Week guideline. And what we're going to do after is complete this guideline with additional information like what happened, what were the results, what were the success stories. And when we have that, we're actually going to share it with all of you and you'll be able to actually disseminate that. And the important thing is that by showing that, we'll be able to actually prepare also the STEM Discovery Week for 2019. And we had an anonymous question. Um, what can I get out of my participation to this campaign? Huh, anonymous. I wonder if they're shy to say, what do I get out of it? Maybe. What can you get out of it? In addition to the sense that you're actually joining and being part of making a difference in education, I'm going to show you actually. I have prepared a slide for this one. This. You're actually going to be part of a great community. You're part of uh, a whole movement in Europe to make STEM education more important for our children, for our future professionals and to everybody basically in the world, especially as I see that we have some ambassadors connecting from other countries. We have a colleague, our uh, Indian scientist ambassador. We have uh, uh, teachers from everywhere. I see Serbian teachers there. We have uh, our Albanian one I can see over there in the chat. So we have teachers from absolutely everywhere. And that's thanks to you and your collaboration. And Sweden as well, Pretty. Thank you for saying that. And now a question from Italy, from Maria. Is it possible to think about the STEM Discovery Month in April 2018? We're targeting a week as the peak of activities. Now, if you actually think of a mountain or a map, basically, if you look at the picture on the left, that's kind of a normal picked mountain. That's what we're looking at for. If you look at the right one, it's more like a plateau kind of mountain. So where you have a month to start with, we want to target a week. Of course, the idea is that uh, there's going to be events happening before. There's going to be events happening later. But we want to concentrate as much as we can in one week. If you look at different campaigns, if when you go to a month, the amount of activities doesn't increase, it just kind of dilutes across the whole month. So we want to make sure that the STEM Discovery Week is a success. And then if you all you tell me that, no, you know what, 2019, we want a month. And not only that, we guarantee there's going to be a thousand activities or 5,000 activities taking place across the whole month. Just tell us and we'll organize it then. And we will have lots more work, so you will have to help on that. And now uh, I will ask uh, our colleague uh, Evita to join, because we have some questions about uh, the activities and teachers or heads of schools or also project officers can do uh, to take part in the STEM Discovery Week. So hello, Evita. Uh, and I was with, uh, with the first question uh, that several people asked, actually. Mustafa Seken, Mirela, Christina, Ivan, and Juliana from Turkey and Romania. Uh, what kind of activities can uh, they do for the STEM Discovery Week? And what can they do if they are, for example, school vice principal? Hi, everyone. So when it comes to activities, you can really go from very simple things to quite elaborated ones. And they can be either on the really class level or you can really expand them to the whole community. 
What I would like to show you is basically some uh, activities that have been organized last year and they were actually part of uh, the competitions that we ran and those were, let's say, some really good examples, some, um, some uh, activities that have really excelled. So last year we had three competitions. The first one was make, uh, was, uh, make your own poster. So basically there we were asking teachers to go into the scientific repository, choose a resource that they like and create a poster about it. So here you can see, like on the top of the top right of my screen, one of them, which is actually the pictures of dynamic hearts and our snowy uh, tail, and you can really see um, how nice this poster has been organized and how motivating can be, how, how appealing and all this. Also a very uh, nice um, uh, competition and activity that came out of it was the Your Favorite Science Book competition that was organized by Scientix. So there we have, actually I think it was the Scientix ambassadors, they have selected the uh, eight science books and then we have been asking teachers to basically get inspirations from these books, use one of these books into their classroom and create activities around them. And there you can see how one of them has actually created a whole game, the number devil game. Another one that was quite interesting as well is the third competition where basically we were asking teachers to organize um, an activity. Uh, an activity that basically had to bring together the school, so teachers, parents sometimes, but also organization, industry, companies, and here you can see a couple of those examples. The first one is the school STEM office lot for STEM education for primary school, where actually a school has put together a whole conference, uh, basically addressing primary uh, school kids. And there they had all sorts of activities, experiments, they used Arduino. So it was quite an intense and quite full program. And the second one that you can see, you can see the picture on the left, is the creative recycling where there the focus was, of course, more environmental. And there that class actually managed to turn this, this event into a community event. So basically it was quite open. Parents, people from the whole city, they could, uh, they could attend, they could participate. So basically they raised uh, awareness. So here I think you can see for yourselves how simple and how complicated things can actually, um, can actually be. More ideas for activities, and that also goes for the second question, the one for um, basically the head of schools, uh, you can find in the blog. So there we have put some uh, ideas that again give this range of complexity. So you can find simple things like the chat, like webinars, and you can find more complex things like organizing debate, organizing visits for from experts, organizing whole um, conferences as well. So we move to the, Pineo, to the next question. So let's move to the next question. So we have uh, one question from Belgium. Uh, can the activity related to the STEM Discovery Week be done in an event where teachers and pupils are present together? And I think this is also connected to another question um, from a pers an anonymous person in Malta. Can activities be carried out in a single class or does it have to be a whole school effort or an extensive activity? Can it be a particular activity during a particular lesson that emulates the work of individuals working in STEM fields? Okay, so starting from Marco, how Marco from cold Belgium. I hope you are warm as we are at the moment. So when it comes to involving actually teachers and pupils, of course, this is very much advisable and it's actually, uh, let's say, long term is what we're aiming for. But what you also, and that what you always need to be very careful with is that when you are working with uh, kids and then you want to take pictures and then you want to make them public or share them on social media, you have to be very careful that you have all the necessary consent. So that goes for everyone. Every time that you work with kids and then you want to make this known to the world, make sure that you have consent for all the pictures and all the material that you are going to um, produce. And then from the anonymous um, Maltese, um, so the activity can actually, again, be uh, organized in any way you want. So if you want it to be a part of your lesson, that's fine. If you want it to 
to be uh, something that extends more and that covers like the whole school and that means that duration wise also extends a bit more that's also that's also fine as well everything is down to let's say your availability the capacities that you have and of course the resources that you have in hand and time of course further question so you can see there how all the teachers and students are participating together and creating all types of different activities. Exactly. Okay, so next question. So Oops, one question from there. Romania. Uh, when organizing a STEM school event, um, do um, are there any requirements regarding the duration, number of participating students, etc.? So when it comes to the duration, we have all agreed, and I hope that you will agree too, that uh, one uh, didactic hour, so the duration of uh, a lesson hour, which varies depending on the, on the country we are in, between 40 and 50 minutes, that should be the minimum duration that we are going for. So although we are quite, let's say we have it clear for the duration, we are not very sure about the number of participating students. So there we would like your help. So what do you think? Use the chat and give me a number. What do you think the minimum number of participating students should be in such activity? Come on, don't be shy. Use your keyboards. 20, 20. Okay. Okay, so the number, the number varies. Okay, which uh, that that makes sense. This is pretty much what we had in mind as well. I think we go up to 200, I see, which is a bit maybe of, maybe over optimistic. Um, so that pretty much goes with what we have been discussing internally as well. So depending on your event, on the type of event, and also on your on your target, that number will vary. So, for example, if you are doing an event that the main purpose is to create awareness. So if you have an event where basically you want to tell people that, you know, STEM is super cool, so, you know, just pay attention. Then that means that probably you are going to target higher numbers. But if you want to make it much more specific, if you want to focus on um, primary school kids or pre-primary, or if you want to catch a very specific, let's say, group into your class that you see that there is a... Um, very, let's say, there is uh, interest and there is potential, then that means probably that your numbers are going to be low. I will try to make the average afterwards, but I think, I think that 20 probably is the number that covers us in this case. Thank you all for your answers. Okay. So now um, to the next question from Eva, Slovakia. Um, what should she? Uh, what should I do from now till the end of April if I want to organize a STEM education activity? Can you advise Eva? Evita. So Eva, again, this magical checklist that you are looking for again is going to depend on your type of your activity. But there are some common things that I can sort of advise you on that I can recommend. First of all, you have to come up with uh, with an idea. You have to decide what activity you are going to, to basically organize. And I hope that the resources that we showed you before, the examples, the blog, all these kind of things, they will give you exactly what you need in order to define that, that idea. Once you define that idea, then we hope and we expect you to go into the platform, into the campaign page, and actually enter this activity into the map. So that's going to put you in the map, literally, and you're going to be part of the, of the STEM Discovery Week. Then, depending again on your type of activity, there might be some, let's say, logistical things that you need to plan. Maybe you need to book a room, maybe you need to get some specific permission, maybe you need some um, uh, specific equipment, maybe you need to invite an expert if this is the event, the type of event you are going for. So all these things, you have to do them straight afterwards. And once everything is settled, I guess then, again, depending on how close or open your event is, there are going to be other things that you can do, like uh, sending possibly invitations, making announcements, using social media, and so on, and so on, and so on. I hope that helps a little bit. Depending on the event, we can, we can of course, try to advise you later on a little bit more uh, specifically, if needed. Thank you, Evita. And now we have two questions. 
Um, so from Turkey and Israel, work and teachers find good examples of activities from previous years, STEM Discovery Weeks. And another question from Romania, what can we do for pre-primary child children? Okay, so first of all, so when it comes to good examples, we have two very useful links for you here. So one of them, so the first one takes you to the campaign from last year. So there you can see the different activities that teachers have submitted and have carried out then. And the second one basically will, will send you to the STEM for you winners. So actually you can see those activities that have really, let's say, have been particularly uh, innovative and uh, interesting. So you will get like the full picture of, uh, um, of the type of activities that you can uh, organize. Now, the second part. So, for Gurita, for Romania, what can we do for pre-primary children? So, pre-primary children. Pre-primary children are, are curious by nature. Toddlers are curious. And toddlers, they like to do things that they sense. So, all, if you look online, there are all sorts of sensory experiments that you can do with, um, with them. There are some that I'm particularly fond of. Um, there are some nice ones, for example, you can look for, uh, there is one that now that we're getting closer to Easter as well, it might combine different things, the one that you use uh, the different uh, eggs and you make the rainbow eggs, so you just need water and vinegar and some color, and the, you just put them in the pots, you let them there, and then you can see how the eggs are going to change, and you can see how the cell after, you know, with the use of vinegar, it's going to dissolve and all that, so there are these small things that you can do. There are other sensory examples like using like um, uh, let's say small bags or beans where you put like different materials and there you can introduce them to the different materials and properties and this kind of cool stuff. And lots of things that you can do uh, related to astronomy as well from creating the solar system using like simple uh, dough but also to small observation. And many, many more examples that you can also, you can always go and look and find in scientists, in the repository. So just look for pre-primary, look for sensory uh, experiments, look for experiments. You're going to find lots and lots of ideas over there. And something also that might be of interest for you, this weekend we have, we have here in Brussels 12 scientists ambassadors with us that are going to work on all sorts of different things. And one of the tasks that we have for them is actually to look into pre-primary activities and experiments. So once they come up with all their ideas, we will make sure that we will uh, report them. We will collect them all in the blog, so then you will find much more uh, ideas and much more inspiration for your, for your little ones. Thank you, Evita. It sounds like a lot of fun. And now another question from Romania. How can we organize the best week? Really tough. The best week. The best week we can only organize it together. I think the slide says it all. So it will be a best week if we manage to get a lot of teachers involved, lots of schools involved all over Europe. So the only thing that we can do in order to make this happen is basically, you know, be active, animate other networks, spread the word and organize and submit a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of activities. I just want to add there that I'm looking forward to the ambassadors also from outside Europe to see if you can get your countries in the map. So uh, I really raise it, send you that challenge to other ambassadors to see if you can also do that. Thank you a lot, Evita, for your, all your tips, uh, your tricks, and your suggestions of activities. And um, and now um, and thank you all for all your contributions also in the chat. And you sent us uh, a lot of suggestions of activities uh, that could be included in the STEM Discovery Week. So I wanted to discuss with you, again about all those uh, suggestions, because all of them are very interesting. For example, we have uh, Clara. She was thinking about a web meeting with European schools, in, uh, and students could share uh, their research about women in STEM, or they could share math lessons with game. Would that fit? That would definitely fit. I see that working at two levels. One is the local level, of course, so that would mean inviting other schools to collaborate, going outside your school, even outside your city, 
If you want to do it at European level, my recommendation is actually to go to e-twinning, where you can actually create partnerships with schools in other countries and make an activity that actually goes beyond borders, basically. And that I'm actually really looking forward to seeing if any of, of you actually involve e-twinning projects there. Maria also, she had a lot of ideas of activities uh, for, for this uh, STEM Discovery Week. Uh, a visit um, and also a conference with experts. And um, it would be a training uh, about a STEM training. Could that also work? Well, you're talking about what, from what I see in the slide, we're talking about a visit to a company, training, and a green day. Well, it sounds like a lot. I, I, so my recommendation there is that not to try to do everything by yourself and actually involve not only the head of school, but other colleagues in the department and really important, getting the, t the students involved as well. Get the students that actually are eager or even the shy ones to say, well, how about you're in charge of this part and getting them involved in the design of the different activities and even further go to the parents as well and make it not only a you, Maria, working by yourself in everything, but actually get a real community created thing with these activities. We received even more testimonies from, from you and uh, from Romania. Uh, and um, one testimony uh, from Chauvin, he said that in the STEM this week, uh, I would like to meet with the biology teachers within meet with the biology teachers and uh, also we would like also to make uh, students visit a local museum and also prepare run with the students wow. run an experiment that's a lot of ideas for the stem discovery week so Siobhan, my recommendation to you is first is to clone yourself because that's a lot i can really see a lot of work i'm very impressed with your plans the inviting the scientists sounds very important. It's very important to actually connect the classes with the, what's going on in research and in STEM across the world. So if you can actually bring scientists to the classroom, that's going to be a, a great success already for your students. If you're going to go to a local museum, especially if it's highlighting the technologies, that's very important as long as it's not an isolated activity. It's very important that you do the preparatory work and also that when the kids come back to the classroom, they can actually follow up with what they saw, how does it connect with what you're teaching and things like that. As far as the experiments, uh, the laser, laser challenges looks really cool. And uh, I'm actually really looking forward to seeing pictures of that activity to see what it looks like. So I hope you do all of those activities. Thank you, Aguera. And another one uh, from Romania, but from a public funded project representative. So she is representing this project and um, it's developed by a partnership of 11 organizations from five countries. And for the STEM Discovery Week, they, they would be interested in developing the STEM activities in all the 11 institutions from 11 different towns. How can they put that in the activity? That looks like a very interesting idea. So you've got 11 different places across Europe doing exactly the same thing. There, I would recommend, first of all, that you actually submit the 11 activities separately, but that you connect them. So what I would say when you submit the form, the activity in the, in the form, you actually have to put a URL. So what I would suggest is that not to create 11 URLs, but all of them connect back to one page in your project where you actually explain the 11 activities. And that way you have 11 activities in the map, one page where you can explain all of them, and from your page you then that redirect everybody to the 11 different cases. In a way, what you're doing is connecting everything in, in such a way that you can see both the similarities and the differences that of course are going to be occur, even if you do the same thing, because different countries, different cultures, they're going to be adapted slightly different. And again, I'm really looking forward to seeing that, actually. Thank you, Evita. Thank you, Agata. So, of course, all the projects are welcome to, to take part also in the STEM Discovery Week. Absolutely. So now we have time for questions. So feel free to uh, post all the questions, all the remaining questions about the STEM Discovery Week 2018 in the chat. So Evita and Agata can uh, address them. 
absolutely. Well, we're gonna. I'm, I'm actually gonna answer to two questions that I actually saw on the way already. One is the date when you're actually close. We're closing the map. We're actually gonna leave it open till quite late, like after, probably until after April, like probably around the 15th of May. But and here's the important thing: if your activities want you want your activities to be part of the competitions, first of all, they have to take place during April. And second, connected to what some of, someone else was asking as well, what about the reporting? We're going to need the report very quickly after April. That We're talking about one week after, uh, in the first week of May, we need to have the results. Uh, the reason is, uh, the report, because we're going to actually compare them, we're going to have different competitions, we're going to select the best ones, and those we're actually going to invite to a weekend in Brussels uh, at the end of June, and we're going to have, as from scientists, 30 teachers that actually organize activities across Europe, coming to Brussels, spending a weekend basically with us here, with Noel, with Adina, and with Audrey probably as well, and myself here in in our future classroom lab. So for those of you that have never been to the future classroom lab, that's actually where we are right now. And we're really looking forward to welcoming many of you as well. Thank you, uh, Agera. So we actually, we saw that there are a lot of questions in the chat. Uh, so I will start with a question from Gilsin. What do you suggest for English teachers as a foreign language? How can they use STEM and integrate with the lesson schedule or content? For example, as an English teacher. Well, mm -hmm. the thing is, when you learn a language, you need to actually talk about something. Actually, one of the I'm actually uh, a physicist. I studied physics, and one of the reasons I did it was because I wanted to talk to people from across the world. But I didn't want to talk about topics that were not interesting for me. But I wanted to talk about real things, and that meant physics for me at the time. So, when you're actually teaching. Uh, an English language, English language, or actually any foreign language, the same that you have a lesson about food, different words for food, why don't you have one about different STEM careers? What's the vocabulary they use? Or how about research terminology? Who's a researcher? Who's actually a data analyst? How do you actually get data? How do you analyze it? Terminology that actually doesn't appear in films, but if you're actually going to study STEM later on, you actually really need to know. Also, you can actually do it on a, on a specific topic. So if, for example, we are now working at European School Net on bioeconomy. And so what's bioeconomy? What is the terminology that you have there? What does it look like? How is STEM going to affect us in the future? What are the things that are going to affect the environment, the world we live in? All those words are a very nice word, way of actually integrating STEM into language classes without actually going into teaching maths in a language lesson, basically. Thank you, Agera. So another question from the an high school in Turkey. How can uh, the include? Uh, how can I include my colleagues at my school in the process? Well, there's two things. If you're talking about convincing them to join a, uh, an initiative. Uh, of course, if they're shy, you're going to have to lead the, f the process. You're going to be the one that actually says what we're going to do, like put your name, and they want to fill in the ma activity map, for example. But I would strongly recommend that you actually start involving them in small things like, hey, you're going to do your classroom, you're going to have a lesson about this. Have you thought about highlighting, highlighting this aspect during that week? Or have you thought about co-authoring a poster? Have you thought about... Uh, supporting your lesson. The important thing is uh, not saying, well, I want you to work more, is you already have your stuff. Let me help you. Let me help your lessons. And by being part of the STEM Discovery Week or Scientists, I can actually help you. And that message is a lot stronger than if you just say, come and join me and do more work, basically. That's how I get them to work. <laughs> and I think I can answer the next question, actually, from Philippe. Will the PowerPoint be available at the end of the webinar? Uh, well, the, will the recording of the webinar will, of course, be published on the Scientix portal in the coming weeks. So you will be able to, to see uh, us again answering your questions. <laughs> and then another question in the chat from Clara. Uh, do we have to record or take pictures of the activities that we will do in the STEM Discovery Week? We 
I, we do recommend you take some pictures and you add them to the reports. Important thing is that you need to separate what are pictures that are for the reporting purposes and which ones we actually have permission to actually disseminate or distribute. Is what Evita was saying before. Uh, we need to be very careful that we don't distribute or make public any picture that we don't have the permission for it. And that includes of any person that actually appears in the picture. So to, the answer is yes, please record as much as you can. Step two, tell us in the reporting which pictures are just for reporting purposes. So they're confidential in a way. And step three, tell us which, which pictures are actually open that we can actually use in social media, reports to the European Commission, reports to ministries, uh, for our publications and anything else. Thank you. So another question in the chat uh, from uh, Alexia. Is there a closing date for submission of the activities on the map? So yes, uh, the first week of May, basically, we're going to stop accepting uh, activities. Okay, and uh, then uh, let's start with other questions. Um, we had another question. Before the STEM week, we need to organize an informative meeting about STEM for teachers so we can make them attend the activity during the week. But who can give this seminar? What's the right procedure? Well, first of all, is never tell them you have to do it. Because if you tell someone you have to do it, they would not do it. Or at least I wouldn't do it. Uh, the second thing is, you basically have to, what we, I recommend you do is basically say, look, this is, this is how I would do the presentation. This is a map of Europe or the world. If you enter, if you actually go to the activities map, you can actually focus into the city where the things are happening. And if you focus in your city town and you go, our school is not in the map. Do you want us to appear in the map? And basically start that way. And that would be my recommendation of how to get the school and other teachers to actually join the activities. I'm already convinced. You're, you're convinced? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, any other questions that you would like us you're to You're saying, address? can I join more than one event I see there in the chat? You can uh, well join whatever you want. You can organize as many activities as you want. You can submit as many activities that you want. And basically, as I said, uh, the third we're looking forward to a uh, number 100. And the day we reach 500, basically, well, let's say that Noel and I will celebrate it on to your health. I see people typing. Any other questions for us? What else do we have? I see there that you're going to organize uh, lots of activities in different countries. And uh, uh, what else do you have? Do you need to join a competition? Absolutely not. The competition is just an added value if anybody wants to join. What we want is as many activities as possible taking place. You want a guide of how to organize an activity. We're working on some guidelines to organize it. So Evita actually is one, our main author of these guys, and we're hoping that it will come out in a, f in a few weeks, basically. And uh, as for STEM Discovery Week with pre-primary, just to tell you, uh, Palma, this year's already including pre-primary, and we're looking forward to getting as many as we can as, as well. And uh, what else do you want? You're most welcome to those of you that are saying thank you already. Uh, you say that uh, to eat winning projects. Absolutely, if they're taking place. You're, one of the questions from Cornelia is if you're doing an eat winning project, can you put it in the STEM map? Yes, as long as there's act, actually something happening from here till the end of April. So, for example, if within an e-tweeting project during that week, you're actually meeting to discuss the next steps or you have a chat between the schools. Those are the things that you would be uploading to the map. And uh, please, uh, Francesco, not only the ambassadors, but everybody, we need to have uh, as many activities happening as possible. Of course, we're organizing some of them as, as well. So, for example, we're going to be 
having some webinars. Uh, the STEM Alliance is going to organize webinars with experts from people from industry. Scientix is going to launch a number of uh, blog entries on how to integrate Scientix resources into different scenarios. And we're looking at, but we're not there, we're not 100% sure how to do it yet. Also, although we have some scientists ambassadors helping, is we're thinking of connecting throughout the week to different schools and locations across Europe to see what's happening live there. If that's something that you would be very interested in doing, do drop us an email and uh, to see that there's quite, if there's enough interest there. As for uh, other activities that we're thinking about. We're, we want to have uh, many blog entries. We want to have training taking place. We want to see uh, presentations. Basically, anything and everything that you can think of. And do you get certificates for all teachers from your school? Uh, we, we will submit. Uh, we will create a certificate for... Nah, now I have to be careful with what I reply there because that means my colleagues are going to have to create those certificates. Thank you for that. <laughs> so, uh, we look into creating certificates definitely to the ones that submit the activities. Uh, we will look into creating it for schools more than per person. Uh, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure because it depends on the information we're collecting. So I reserve the right to change my mind there. And what are you doing? Textile dyeing activity by traditional methods. That sounds cool. Eratosthenes experiment, absolutely. Uh, you, you want certificates? <laughs> we'll look into it. I'm not committing <laughs> yet. Anything else that you want to know? Or we're off for dinner. <laughs> and also, Adina shared the link to the feedback form so uh, in the chat. So don't forget uh, to, um, to fill in the feedback form if you want a certificate. Any other questions? Social science and ours. You can use any activities you want during your STEM activities. Uh, the more of one colleague that submit an event. Certificates, let me put it this way. I, I'll think about it and we will announce it within the next few weeks how we will carry out the certification. But if you fill in the feedback form for this webinar, you will ah, receive certificates. <laughs> Definitely. So certificates, yes, if you actually fill in the feedback form to, for today. In the feedback form, you can also add suggestions that we should take into account for the STEM Discovery Week. So you all think certificates are important for the STEM Discovery Week? Write it in the feedback form. The more we get, the more chances we'll do it. We're very open to that. And uh, you, you, you all write a lot. <laughs> Good. Well, I think I think I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for all your questions and and your contributions to this online questionnaires. And um, we hope that we answered uh, all of your questions. With, uh, thanks to Evita and Akeda who answered all the questions and talked a lot. And uh, thank you also to Audrey and uh, and Adina for the tech support in this webinar. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.